Okay, folks, it's December 15th, and the RAM shortage is still going. Happy holidays, everyone. Let's get right into the stories, a trio of stories that are going to tell us a little bit about the direction of the RAM memory shortage. And the first story we're going to start with here is about the Nintendo Switch 2 RAM pricing. As you can see, we have a story here that's up on Tom's Hardware about prices rising 41% on the RAM in the Switch 2 and the NAND flash prices going up 8%, which of course is much less impactful, but that 41% is a pretty big amount, especially for something like the Nintendo Switch 2, where the margins, I would assume, are pretty tight. Now that is not all. The last video I did, I mentioned that Framework said it was going to have to raise its prices. And I have to admit, this actually happened a little bit quicker even than I was expecting, because we have a uh, story here about Framework's DDR5 memory prices going up 50 50% for its DIY laptops. Now, if we go over to Framework's website, I have a configuration up here for, uh, what is this? Uh, Framework 13, I think? Framework 16 laptop. And we can indeed see the DDR5 5600 memory. That is now going to run you $60. It used to run you $40. Uh, of course, the price increase is going to get relatively larger as you get the more and more amounts of RAM. So if you want 16 gigabytes of RAM, that is going to be $120. That's still, I guess, not... Uh, I don't know, for a laptop upgrade, I guess that's kind of okay. But then you start getting into like 32 gigabytes of RAM, $240, 64 gigabytes of RAM, $480. I mean, this is really starting to look like Apple pricing, right? But that is just what they have to do in order to uh, make their own margin on their products. I don't think I have to tell you that a company like Framework is not exactly rolling in cash. Uh, they are a very small laptop manufacturer. But speaking of the companies that do roll in cash, well, let's go over to Dell because we have this uh, article from Business Insider. Dell computer prices are about to rise for corporate clients. Now, uh, this article specifically says there is up to a 30% increase coming. Dell is warning, basically, its corporate clients of an up to 30% increase in pricing. The actual range cited here is 10 to 30%. Now, what does that mean? What does that mean to be a corporate client? Well, you know, if you're actually, if you worked for a, uh, a company in an office job at any point in the last 10, 20 years, you may have seen a Dell laptop come across your uh, desk, or you may have been assigned one, and when and that's a corporate client. You're, the company is signing you a laptop, that's a Dell laptop, that is a corporate client. So when Dell says to its corporate clients uh, that they're going to increase prices by 10 to 30 percent, as is in this article, that is really impactful because Dell actually makes most of its money from corporate clients. So they have a big incentive to keep things going smoothly for them and to keep them well informed about what the pricing is going to be. And what about the timing? Well, if we go down here, the article real quick, Dell is increasing its prices on December 17th. Now, again, this is for corporate clients. This does not necessarily mean that you're going to see also a consumer price increase on December 17th. It is possible. I haven't heard anything from Dell. They're not commenting right now on what a consumer price increase timeline might be like. But in any case, we do. I, I do believe that these price increases are coming. They're already starting to arrive. So I'd expect it to be soon for consumer as well, even if it's not on December 17th. Now, another story I want to jump over to here is on, uh, I saw this on PC Gamer. Samsung will reportedly announce the end of SATA SSD production next year. Uh, now, this actually is going to be cited from Moore's Law is Dead, uh, but Moore's Law is Dead, it claims that they have heard from industry sources that they've heard that uh, Samsung plans to pull out of SATA SSD production. Now, this is not nearly as impactful as Micron saying that they were going to end the crucial line of consumer products. This is only for Samsung SATA SSDs. So those are fairly old products at this point. They're older products. They probably were going to be thinking about discontinuing those sometime soon anyway, but the current shortages and memory may have caused them to bring up their timelines a little bit. And unfortunately, you know, it's sad to see that going away because that means you're going to probably be pushed towards, you know, by the more expensive PCIe M.2 storage, which is really skyrocketing in price right now. Now, all of this is, of course, increasing prices at retailers. And when people get kind of panicked about prices, what happens? Well, the eBay scalpers arrive. And so we have a story here on Tom's Hardware about RAM scalping taking hold on eBay. Some DDR5 selling more than $2,000. Right here, uh, they mentioned, for example, this DDR5 6000 uh, kit had a price tag of about $120 and it dramatically rose to $430 over a very uh, short period of time. I wanted to take a look at this actually at the prices right now, you know, on eBay. So 
I brought up, just did a search for DDR5 memory. Prices are generally pretty high. The first listing is $150 for 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Pretty high price for that amount of memory. And if we just scroll down here, you see things are very uh, sort of in flux. There's still some things that are okay deals, but then 64 gigabytes of memory, Corsair Vengeance memory, $550. Prices are definitely high. I think the scalpers that are charging like over a thousand dollars are in the minority still, but prices are high. If we look at DDR4 memory on eBay, prices are also pretty high. I was particularly seeing like some of these ATEC kits for 32 gigabytes for 150 bucks. I mean, right now in the grand scheme of things, that's not bad, but for DDR4 memory, which is definitely not high performance memory anymore, you would expect maybe prices to be a little bit lower. And so with that said, I wanted to do a quick price check on Amazon, Amazon US to see what the prices are looking like. And it's not great news right now, actually. If we go over to Amazon bestsellers for memory, we're going to notice a few things. First of all, prices are still high. And in particular, I'm going to take a closer look at this G-Skill Trident RAM here in a second, the price on that. But you also notice that a lot of this memory doesn't even have a price uh, listed. The top two best-selling memories actually is not available from Amazon first party, out of stock. Also, the number five pick is also out of stock. When it says you've got six offers, three offers, that means it's from basically third party sellers. Uh, they might be decent, they might not. Uh, now, I mentioned I want to look at that G Skill Trident Z5 memory. This is currently $374. I'll call your attention also. This is currently free delivery December 26th through January 7th. So they're not shipping this quickly, um, which indicates that they are, you know, maybe struggling to keep things in stock. And if we look at the price of this particular kit, Camel 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 has only picked up the $300. $160 price it looks like so it must have gone up price pretty recently but of course this uh, this graph down here is totally up and to the right so it's been increasing in price very quickly maybe some sign that it's it's sort of evening out here at about 360 well now 375 dollars but we'll have to see now going over the ddr4 again this is older memory this is a 16 gigabyte actually a 32 gigabyte two times 16 gigabyte kit for 156 bucks so kind of that's actually like i'd say this is a better deal than what you got on ebay because this is corsair instead of atac memory and by the way i'm going to leave some affiliate links to the best selling memory best selling ssds in here if you want to support the channel that's a way you can do it i don't really expect you to buy any ram or memory or storage right now but hey if you want to go nuts you'll find those uh, those links in the description and again stock issues I'll call your attention to free delivery December 26th to 31st and the fastest delivery is basically the same so this is not something that's just in stock and immediately is going to be sent to you speedily as you would normally expect from Amazon and if we go over to the price tracker now scrolling down here at the prices for this you can see on the graph the new price the new third par party price went up really quickly the $250 and then it, it went away uh, that was probably sort of Amazon scalping that does happen on Amazon too if we take away the new third party prices go to Amazon though you can see again we are super up into the right here this was as low as under fifty dollars just a couple months ago a few months ago and it looks like it's now at 156.99 so that is a huge price increase i also wanted to bring in some storage i didn't talk about storage before but i really should so let's go look at the amazon best sellers in solid state storage and we're actually seeing a little bit of a repetition i mean the number one pick is not in stock from amazon at all anymore you've only got the offers here the rest, it looks like we do have some stock. But let's take a look at this number two pick, the Samsung 990 Evo Plus SSD 2 terabytes, which is a pretty good amount of, of SSD storage. Uh, we're going to be looking at the price here for that of $176.99, basically $180, a few bucks south of that. If we go over the camel, camel, camel. We'll see that the pricing here has increased a lot over the last few months. It looks like the L time low here was $116.99, a little under $120 then, and now we're up to almost $180. So not nearly as big of a price increase as we've seen for RAM, but it's still a 50% price increase over a few months, which is very substantial. I also wanted to look, this is another uh, best-selling and I think a very popular overall solid state drive. This is a WD Black one terabyte SSD, very good general purpose SSD. And this one actually, I was surprised, is up to $150. It's surprising because this is only one terabyte, one. 
the other one, the Samsung we just looked at was two terabytes. And if we go over the camel, 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 look, the price increases on this. We see this too has seen some pretty substantial price increases, not to an all time high yet, but that all time high was when it just came out. So, you know, manufacturers will usually post a high MSRP when they first come out just to get the early adopters, then things will drop. We can see this dropped all the way down to 60 bucks all time low. Now that was back in 2023, so it was quite some time ago. But as recently as, you know, the summer of this year, and for a long time, it was it was selling in that sort of $120 price range. And now we're up to 150 bucks. So again, we're seeing a little less, I think, than a 50% price increase over the last few months. So not nearly as much as RAM, but still a very noticeable amount. Now, now this is the wrap up. What does this all mean for you right now? I don't want to be too alarmist. I, you shouldn't buy anything if you don't need it because you know eventually prices presumably will come back down. However, if you do need a laptop right now, if you've been on the fence or you've been on the fence about an upgrade and you can find a decent deal, now is the time to spring on it. I think what we're seeing in particular from those mentions about the Nintendo Switch 2 pricing on RAM, on the price increases from Dell and the price increases from Framework, these are all examples of the kinds of price increases we can expect. One final thing I wanted to add about the long-term outlook is that it is still looking like there's going to be very high long-term demand because the rush to build data centers is still, it's a rush. It's actually just been increasing more and more and more. And to show that, I wanted to direct your attention to a post from a, a construction industry analyst, Michael Gux. He is the chief economist at Construct Connect. I've talked to him before actually about data centers, uh, some of the reporting I do on data centers and he keeps an eye on construction demand for the entire construction industry. So he's pointing out that the true demand for data centers is probably close to $60 billion spent through 2025. That is data center starts. And again, this is data center starts. This is not completions. This is ones that are going to go into construction or just now going into construction. Now, I would assume that a lot of these do have some kind of contracts or are starting to form some kind of contracts with NVIDIA and other providers of AI hardware so that they are not going to build at a situation where they finish their data center and they don't have anything to put in it. However, I would also expect that some of those contracts can still be pending and that does indicate there is a very high level of demand over the next few years because if you have a, a data center, it takes a few years to build. And just in case you're curious about what the pace looks like, here is, I'll highlight this graph that was in the post from Michael Gux uh, from Construct Connect and it shows the data center starts on a monthly basis, right? So you can see 2021, 2022, 2023, you had less than a billion dollars on a monthly basis being done. And now uh, as of going into 2026, some months we're seeing three, four, $5 billion worth of data center construction going into the industry. That is a huge increase. And as long as that line stays up there, we're going to see an increase in memory demand. And that unfortunately is going to hit us on the consumer market. So the long-term outlook is always a little dicey because you know no one can predict everything, but in the shorter term over the next few months, I would definitely expect things to be looking pretty expensive. So that is the latest on the memory shortage. Not a lot of good news out there. In fact, I would say this week we have basically zero good news out there. So if you need some memory and you can find it at a low price, uh, snag it while you can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.